Ladies and gentlemen, let's try Game into the Com video. We have news from Valve. They've actually just released TOGL, which is a direct 3D to OpenGL shim. More about that in just a moment. To the public as they place it on a GitHub. Now, it's clear, oh, by the way, guys, I've done this in an article as well, which does have a couple of references uh, that you guys can check out, including some of the stuff that we're going to be discussing in this video. So, it's obvious that Valve are pushing a lot towards the OpenGL, which is very beneficial to them and their agenda. Uh, OpenGL, as they state, is everywhere. Op the Steam OS, of course, is the primary example they give. But you've also got the desktop, which is Linux, OS X, and Windows. They point out that China overwhelmingly still uses Windows XP. But it's using fairly modern hardware. There's also, of course, a mobile, which is using it, which is OpenGL ES. And Web WebGL as well. And so now they've released Togel. I hope that's how you pronounce it. Anyway, T-O-G-L. Now it's a shim. Now all this basically does is act as a translation layer, which pretty much takes a direct 3D um, command and it will translate it to OpenGL. Now there are some caveats, of course, as you would expect for this. The first is that the type... This application, by the way, was created from Dota 2. It's basically part of the Dota 2 source. Now, it's going to help a lot of studios out early, but there are some issues. Primarily, not all of the aspects of Shader Model 3 are implemented. In other words, it's a limited feature set of uh, Direct3D 9.0.c. Uh, and so, for those of you who are wondering, okay, well... That's great. What about DX10 or, more realistically, DX11? Well, if you're using DX11, you're pretty screwed. When you consider that Windows XP, which is primarily, you know, one of the benefits of this, um, particularly as they cite China, um, is pretty much on life support right now. Most gamers are now going to start moving to Windows 7. So therefore, creating DX9 titles is no longer going to be the best interest of games developers, particularly when you start to take into account the PS4 and, of course, the Xbox One. And to use certain features on those consoles, of course, you're going to require DX11. That's not to say that I'm an advocate of DX11 or DirectX. Clearly, something needs to be done. Microsoft are, of course, trying to push DX12, which is supposedly going to be unveiled in just a few short days. Meanwhile, you've got AMD with Mantle. And of course, as you would expect, the OpenGL standards is also starting to move forward. And as I've mentioned, it, it can be used for multiple different things, such as mobile, console, Linux, Macintosh, Windows, and so on and so forth. For those who are looking to create simple ports, particularly indie games developers, it's no no doubt going to be useful. Now, for those of you who are thinking, sweet, I'm just going to download this and get my games to run. Well, not so much. Basically, this has to be part of the binary of the game, right? It has to be basically all coded in as part of the game's libraries. And so... This is for basically games developers, not for members of the public. So if you're just hoping to basically just download this real quick, drag and drop it into a folder, maybe press an executable, and Bob's your uncle, you're going to be able to play whatever you want in OpenGL, not so much. Don't think of this as Valve's endgame. This is more Valve trying to demonstrate their support for the OpenGL standard. This is more them... Basically creating a bit of a fuss, helping developers, and no doubt indie developers primarily, to release games on OpenGL standard. Because if they can do that, OpenGL 4.4, for example, has a rather large market share now. And if they can do that, it just benefits them and their own distribution of Linux, which of course is SteamOS. Is this anything to write home about now, if you're a gamer? No. It's nothing to get super excited about, but what it is, is a great indication that things are starting to change. And I personally believe um, that within the next 
Personally speaking, and this is my own... What's the word I'm looking for? Opinion. This is not backed up in fact, but it is backed up by what's kind of happening in the gaming industry. I honestly believe that the PC industry is going to be changing quite a bit in the next few years. And I don't necessarily know if it's going to impact us as gamers, but it is going to impact the development. You can see this because of the next generation consoles, the move towards more powerful programming languages, the fact that Microsoft are releasing DX12 with um, OpenGL support is improving uh, for many games developers and it's going to be lower level languages as well. We know of course that Manta is already out there and impressing games developers left, right and centre. I mean they've got a ridiculous amount of games already lined up for Manta and God knows how many haven't even been announced yet. It's are going to be very interesting for PC gamers. I honestly feel that the next couple of years are going to be the best for a long time for PC gamers because the level of technology that's being released and the speed of that technology is released is starting to become quite impressive. I'm very interested to see what Maxwell is going to happen. Um, and the reason I say Maxwell, as well as whatever AMD happens to call their next uh, high-end GPUs, as in, well, because I honestly can't remember what the name is offhand, to be honest with you, and I'm going to be too lazy to Google it. It's a simple case of, it's going to be very strange to see just what support those things have. And as I've mentioned before, DirectX is going to be extremely, extremely just weird for the Xbox One. Because I want to see what feature set it actually has, and if the if the Xbox One fully implements it and supports it on the hardware level. Regardless, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. Not too many answers in this one, I know, but you could feel things are a brewing, folks. Anyway, I'll see you soon. Once again, I apologise if you're not a regular viewer. I just put this in anyway. I uh, apologise for the crappy voice, um, but still suffering a bit from being, you know, plague. So I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.